Hi, and thanks for coming. My name's Adam Culp, and you're at BeachCast. Today, we're going to be talking about PHP mess detector and using it to run code sniffs against our PHP code to find common problems that we might want to solve. So stick around, and we'll get right on that. So as I said, today we're going to be uh, using PHP Mess Detector. It's a, it's an application that can be installed. It's actually PHP code. Um, it's, a, it's a port of a common tool in Java called uh, PMD. Uh, so written in PHP, it allows us to be able to run it against our PHP code and perform common sniffs. Now, there are multiple different... Uh, different measurements available. One of the ones that I use most often is the code size. Uh, the, the code size um, toolkit, if you will, or filtering, if you will. Uh, I, I run the code size on it because I want to find out a lot of things related to sizes of things. And, and it measures a bunch of different things. First off, as, uh, as in the previous video, I created a Docker image that makes this really easy for us. Uh, you might recall in the previous, in one of my previous videos, I was talking about PHP lock using PHP LOC to find out the lines of code and some certain measurements in our applications. I've done the same thing for PHP mess detector. So it enables us to be able to, to gauge these. So let's take a look at that. So what I've got uh, here, I'm sharing my screen and we can see that I've created this Docker image out on Docker Hub, uh, Adam Culp slash PHP hyphen code hyphen quality. And if I scroll down here, uh, we'll see that one of the tools that I've included in this is PHP mess detector. And right here, this section is dedicated to PHP mess detector. And it, and it puts a sample command here, uh, enabling us to then know, be able to run it easy. So what I did is I'm going to run this against a code base. Uh, and I've already done that because the PHP mess detector can take a little bit of time depending on the code that you're running it against. Uh, so let's take a look at a simple command here. Actually, that's kind of small. So what I want to do is I want to uh, make it a little bit bigger so we can read it. So the command that I used is actually issuing the Docker command. I'm telling it to run and I'm giving it the name of the image that I have out on uh, Docker Hub. And I'm issuing the command PHP. And what I'm telling it to do is I want the, I want it to run, run PHP mess detector on the current directory. That's what this dot is here for. I'm telling it, I want the output to be XML. So I want the results file to be an XML. I find that it's a lot more readable. So I like using XML as my output for, for, uh, for PHP mess detector. Cause, uh, you know, XML is just easier to read as far as that goes. Um, I'm telling it to use the code size filters. And by using the code size filters, uh, I, I'm gonna cover what that entails or what that includes here in just a minute. Um, of course, I'm telling it to exclude the vendor directory because in most cases in modern PHP applications, I'm using Composer. I don't need to run the PHP mess detector against third-party code in my vendor directory, so I ignore that. I'm telling it to exclude it. And then I'm also telling PHP mess detector to create a report file and put that in the current working directory. And the name of that file will be phpmd underscore results dot uh, XML. So uh, now I've already ran this on a code base. Um, uh, here we see that I've already run it. So now I can go into that directory and, and then we see that I do have a phpmd phpmd underscore results dot XML. Now, if I view that, I'm going to view it in the browser because I like the way the browser shows this uh, with all the color coding and everything for XML. It just makes it really readable. So I, li I like outputting it in a browser. And we can see here that uh, it, it tells you the rule set that it's running. It tells you the, the rule set. And it also tells you the, the directory. Uh, as well as 
you know, the the message of what's going on. Now, in this case, this very first one here, we can see that it's telling me the, the class controller has 17 public methods, but yet the threshold has been set to 10. So it has seven more than what our threshold is set to. And that's not extreme, but it's enough that it triggers the triggers the sniff, right? So, and we can go down through here and look, there's even more, it's a class controller. The overall complexity is 81. The, the overall uh, complexity is 81 and we're expecting a threshold of 50. Now that's a class complexity, that's cyclomatic complexity. For those of you who don't know what cyclomatic complexity is, that is the number of decision points inside the code, right? The complexity, the cyclomatic complexity is the number of decision points in the code and this is actually sniffing for those decision points and telling us if it's too high. In this case, for a for a class, we're expecting the threshold to be 50 for a class and the threshold in this one is 81. Now that that's, again, that's not alarming because there may be extra methods in this class. Now, one thing to keep in mind is PHP mess detector is alerting us to possible uh, issues in the code. Just because it's in this report doesn't mean it's a bug. It just means that it triggered a, a smell and by triggering a smell, it just highlights that there might be potential issues that we want to pay attention to. It doesn't mean that there is an issue. It just means that there might be something. So it tells us to take a closer look, right? Um, you know, we can we can scroll down through here and see some other things like cyclomatic complexity, for instance, for a for a method. In this case, we have a method that has a cyclomatic complexity of 13. We're expecting a threshold of 10. So anything above 10 in a function triggers a, a threshold. Now, I recommend that you try to keep your cyclomatic complexity lower for a method. But again, we're using we're using the default, which is 10. And uh, so anything above that, you really need to pay attention to. Um, and in this case, we see that something's a 13. We can look down and see that there's another code size smell, which is the the, the class having more than 14 public methods. Right, and uh, our threshold in this case was 10 and it returned 14. We can see the overall complexity. Uh, other things that we might find in here is like an end path complexity, right? An end path complexity, the threshold by default is set to 200. And in this case, there's a method that is 1024. Uh, end path complexity is the number of pathways through a code. A little bit different than decision points. Pathways through the code is a, is a little different than decision points because decision points might lead to more pathways, but it's, it is a different measurement. Uh, so it, it's good to know that. Um, there's also different other uh, methods. It, it might let me know the, um, uh, for instance, the, the number of methods in a class, the, the number of, of uh, functions in a class, uh, the, the number of complexity within a function or within a class, you know, in different things all related to code size. And so it's a good, this is a good tool to run. And again, it's here in the Docker container. So it makes it really easy for us to be able to run it really quickly without having to worry about installing a development environment just to run the tool. I can run it within Docker uh, using this. Um, now on the... Um, in, in GitHub, we see that if you look at phpmd slash phpmd is the repository for this. One thing we do note is that right now this project is considered orphaned and needs a new maintainer. So if you're interested in maintaining this project, please reach out to the to the current um, you know organizer or the current maintainer of this. Um, it is a worthwhile tool. It's a great tool. I've used it for years and years. Um, if I had more time, I would volunteer to, to be the maintainer for this. Uh, but anyway, if anybody's interested, please reach out. Uh, I, I, there's also other tools out there for doing this sort of thing. PHP Mess Detector has just been my go-to for many years. And, uh, and, and so, so there is that. There's also a website here where you, can go, where you can click on to view the documentation around PHP Mess Detector and also uh, learn different things about the various filters that are available. Um, let me see if they have them here. Maybe not. 
no uh oh there's rule sets so we have the various rule sets one is looking for clean code there's code size or there's controversial uh, as well as the design naming and unused code. So if I wanted to use, instead of using the, the filter I used, which was code size, I could use the unsized code filter. And that would tell me code in my application that is not being executed. Um, and, and maybe we need to do some cleanup there. But anyway, there's, uh, there's a lot of good stuff in PHP Mess Detector. I encourage you to check it out. Please go out and check out this uh, this uh, image on Docker Hub. It makes it really easy to run it. And um, let me know how it went for you. If you use it, uh, please leave comments. Let me know your thoughts. If you're using some other tool, you know, I know I'm, I'm aware of Scrutinizer. I'm aware of a bunch of other tools out there. Leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know different tools that you've used uh, or, or any other methods that you use to, to gauge the mess of your code. Um, as always, please uh, like the video down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and, and also tell your friends about BeachCast. Uh, I, I do a new episode every week and, um, and I really like to hear from you. So, uh, so that's all I have for this episode. Hopefully you found it useful. Thank you for coming around.